Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of my kick drum miking tutorial. Now in part one, I discussed the methods that I use for miking the kick drum and the microphone positions that I prefer in the drum shell in order to get a good solid sound out of the drum. And I go over about a half a dozen of my favorite kick drum specific microphones and my impressions of each of those, which hopefully will help you make a choice when you're looking for a microphone for picking up low frequency instruments or kick drums. Now I'd like to talk about the use of multiple microphones to pick up the kick drum. Some people will put a microphone inside of the drum shell in order to get the low frequencies, the bottom part of the drum picked up nicely. And then they will also use a second microphone on the drummer's side of the drum, on the beater head, aiming usually at the beater directly so they can get a very percussive smack out of the, um, th that, that microphone. And then by blending those two microphones together, they get both the really deep, powerful slam of the drum plus the percussive hit of the beater hitting the, the drum skin. And by blending those two together, it gives you a little more flexibility in your mix and can give a uh, very dynamic drum sound. When doing this technique, we need to make, uh, make note of the phase of the microphones. On your mixing console, there's likely a button or a control that allows you to flip the polarity or flip the phase of the signal. And so what this is all about is when the drummer hits the drum, the drum skin moves forward. That forward motion of the drum skin then pushes the diaphragm of the microphone inward, assuming the microphone is on the audience side, on the resonant side of the bass drum. And then uh, that signal is run through the PA system, and it causes the loudspeaker cones to bump forward. So when the drum head moves forward, the loudspeaker cones and the PA system and the subwoofers move forward as well. If we were to flip the phase on that channel on the mixer, then when the drum head gets pushed forward by the drummer, it goes through the system and it would actually cause the loudspeaker cones to pull inward rather than going forward. In most situations, you can change the phase of your audio signal and it won't really make a lot of audible impact. Uh, however, if you are blending more than one audio signal together, if the two signals are blended in phase, meaning they're both moving in the same direction at the same time, they will add together. Kind of like water waves, if you will. If both water waves are cresting and rising up at the same time and they blend together, it gets even bigger. However, if one wave is going up while the other one is going down, they'll cancel each other out. And so it is with your microphones. If you're trying to blend two microphones together on the same sound source, and one is in normal phase and the other is inverted phase, then they will tend to cancel each other out. Now, when you're miking the drum kit on stage, most of the kick drum is coming through your kick drum microphone. But other things on stage are also picking up that sound just via bleed through. And so what I would often do is I would often have the drummer tap the kick drum on stage and listen to that through the PA system. And then I would hit the invert polarity switch on the channel to see if the kick drum sounds better and deeper in one mode versus another. And whichever one sounds best, I'll leave the setting at that point. So if it's so if other microphones on stage, for example, your vocal mics or maybe mics on nearby guitar amps are picking up that kick drum sound, I want the microphone on the kick drum itself to work positively with those other microphones rather than having the system trying to cancel itself out. Now, of course, there is some distance differences between where the kick drum mic is and where those other microphones are. And those distances actually have some impact based on the wavelength and speed of sound. And so we may find that an inverted setting or a positive setting works best. Um, I experiment and see whichever one sounds best. And then when I put a microphone on the opposite side of the drum, as you can figure, when the drum head is moving toward one mic, it's actually moving away from the other mic, if there's a mic on the front side and the back side of the drum. And so in that instance, in most cases, we would want to flip the polarity of one of those microphones so that 
the signals coming out of the microphones are working together. They're both going up at the same time and both coming down at the same time. So in practical terms, what I do is uh, set up the band, open all the mics on stage, and I'll unmute everything, and then ask the drummer to do a few hits on the kick drum and flip the polarity from positive to negative and back and forth and just see which setting sounds deeper and more powerful and leave it at that setting. And then if I have a secondary mic on the drum kit, I would assume that the polarity on that secondary mic should be the opposite of whatever the front mic is. So if the front mic is in a normal mode, I would expect to put the uh, beater side mic that's next to the drummer on an inverted mode. But I would try it both ways. So I bring up the drums with the standard mic on it, then I bring up the secondary mic, and I try the polarity one way and another way on that secondary mic to see which sounds more complete and whole and deep. With high frequency signals, you know, signals coming off of guitars, for example, the polarity typically isn't such a big deal because those wavelengths are relatively small. They're usually in the order of a foot to a few inches, you know, because they're higher frequencies. And so those small wavelengths just sort of permeate through the room and they blend however they're going to blend. And, and there isn't a whole lot of really troublesome interaction. But when dealing with low frequency instruments below 100 hertz, the wavelengths get to be fairly significant. They can be in the order of multiple feet. And because those wavelengths fill the room, and if you could imagine um, it's like filling a room with water waves with a crest wavelength of multiple feet, if I have sources that are putting out such low frequency waves, they actually will add and subtract from each other pretty readily. And so the polarity starts to become an apparent, uh, it starts to have an apparent effect on the lower frequency instruments, such as bass guitar and kick drum and so forth. Um, in most cases, you don't mess with the polarity switch on the board, but in situations where you're using multiple mics on a single source, that does become an issue and it does have an impact on the sound. And of course, because of the physical distance difference and or timing difference between the signals out of these different microphones, and it's probably coming out of a couple of different woofers um, on your front of house PA, and just because of the dimensions of the room, in many cases you'll find that the room has hot and cold spots with bass, and flipping the polarity one way or another will have some impact on how the uh, bass flows throughout the room but you know you make the best compromises that you can to give you the deepest most powerful sounding bass um, one more point is that with a single sound source generally it's best to not have multiple microphones too close to it now in the case of a kick drum we actually have two distinct sound sources that we're picking up. We're trying to pick up the sound of the drum inside of the shell, which is giving us that deep, boomy, powerful kick drum sound. And we have a second sound source, which is the beater actually smacking the head. And so those are two separate sources. But if we have a situation where we have more than one microphone picking up a single source... This is usually not a very good idea because the two s signals coming off of those two different microphones will blend in ways that are usually not too positive. And so there's a three to one rule, which means that if a microphone is one foot away from a sound source, there really should be no other microphones within three feet of that same sound source to prevent the two microphones from picking up the same signal and trying to blend those two signals together, you end up oftentimes with a comb filtering effect, which means that there are additions and subtractions at various frequency bands as you walk up through the frequency spectrum. So instead of getting a nice, even, smooth frequency response, you get a really jagged, ragged sounding frequency response. And uh, because the peaks and dips in the frequency response are such narrow in bandwidth in many cases, it may not be audibly apparent as to exactly what's going on. You'll just notice that the instrument doesn't sound quite right. So one quick tip there is try to keep instruments from being too picked up by too many microphones at the same time, unless you're doing it for a you know intended effect and you're aware of the um, 
circumstances involved. Anyway, just a quick tip for you regarding multiple mics on a kick drum. Personally, I tend not to do that very often. I generally find that proper mic placement with a single mic inside of the shell and uh, you know a little bit of careful use of EQ in order to get the tone shaping that I'm looking for works pretty well for me most of the time. And um, But, you know, experiment. And this is all subjective and this is all art. And so do whatever works best for you. And if you like the sound of using two mics in your kick drum, that's fantastic. Just um, experiment with that polarity switch when you do things like that to make sure that everything is coming together in phase and adding together rather than having the two mics fight with each other in the frequency domain. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the tip. My name is Barry, and I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area. I'd love to help you out if you need a sound engineer, you need some advice, and uh, if so, please contact me, and I'll do what I can for you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you stick around and watch more, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.